We have focused on St. Augustine and how the concept of free will and determinism evolved from a Western perspective. This has been more of a theological approach, but how does Eastern spirituality compare with this? The Eastern approach says that we have a destiny and our ultimate goal is to become part of universal consciousness. So, there is an end point where all human beings are heading. In Western thinking, we have these situations where our behaviors are driving us to respond as we move forward, but we do not have a single end point where each person is heading towards. They do not even get into the debate of how we can figure out this process. Everything exists spontaneously and acts under the rules enacted by a higher power. Man's intellectual and sensory capabilities cannot comprehend that which is difficult to express, such as ethereal substance not belonging to this world. In other words, we build this journey on faith and not knowing. If we were to compare some of the Western thinking around free will and determinism to Eastern spirituality, we could find some common ground. Eastern philosophy can be likened to using a moderate or modified approach instead of the hard method described earlier in the series. Some Western thinkers also propose such a position as well. There is a certain amount of determinism. For example, true masters will always say that when you have arrived at their door, an invitation was made long before to you. But it is on the journey to that final destination that you pause to visit. It is said that by the time you arrived at the Master's home, you have already left him or her to continue your journey. But here is where free will can play a role. Some of us may be called, but we may choose not to participate, or we may slow down our progress. Say that it is your destiny to arrive in New York from Los Angeles. You stop off at different airports and there are connecting flights that you take to reach your destination. These connecting points could be seen in life as visits to teachers or life events. However, you can delay, miss your connection or choose to visit the city you arrived at and connect at a later time to head for New York. You may even decide to return to LA for some reason, but ultimately your default direction is for you to arrive in New York. The way that Eastern philosophy would describe determinism also has to do with ego attachment. Simply stated, ego relates to a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. It is driven by the interactions of our internal drives which react with what is taking place around us. This fits with the deterministic view we spoke about earlier. We are a product of our past experiences and our internal biology. We have accumulated many impressions from our life experiences. As a result, everything we think we know about ourselves is only a product of our past experiences. The Eastern belief is that when we live our lives through our past impressions, as most people do, 
we will be utilizing the same patterns of thinking repeatedly. We will continuously make the same predictable choices and become stuck in these patterns. For the most part, we do not recognize the pattern. We create our future in a way that will attract the same life circumstances over and over again. It appears that determinism is our way of life. From the perspective of the spiritual path, we can remove these past impressions through the practice of spiritual techniques. The result is that we begin to get rid of our past conditioning. When this past is cleared away, we also become free of any future repetition. Our history is no longer creating a future pattern for us. The world becomes less about us and our self-importance. If we can go back to our friends the photons, remember we said that photons were elemental particles and that they were the smallest unit of light. They cannot be divided further. We talked about how our emotions affect our DNA, which also affects the photons. Groundbreaking research looked at the behavior and movement of photons. If we observed a photon in motion, we should be able to predict where its destination should be. Knowing its speed, we should be able to predict when it would arrive at that destination. However, photons behaved differently. They could go back into the past trajectory or appear in a totally different location than where it was initially heading. We cannot predict the momentum and position of quantum particles at a later time, even if we knew its speed and location at the past time. Quantum mechanics predicts observations in terms of probabilities only. If the very elemental particles of which the universe is made up of is unpredictable, this casts doubt on whether the universe is deterministic at all.